Oh, the coffee, it just touches the soul, man. It just touches the soul. Hello guys and welcome, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. Welcome to the video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can manage your chat much better as your stream grows and grows and grows. Hopefully you guys are experiencing some really good growth on your channel. If you are, well done. If you're not, don't worry, persevere, try and improve your stream. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more tips and so on. If you are experiencing growth, and I've been through some of this, you will experience the chat volume increase, increase, increase. And of course, there's like a, an adaptive mechanism that you need to go through. Otherwise, you're going to start to not manage your chat very well. I've been through periods of managing my chat very well, poorly and very well again. And it's as the volume of chat increases, you almost have to adapt your stream and also your stream style. And of course, how you inherently manage your chat and of course as a broadcaster you're always managing lots of different things music you might be managing a game you might be managing chat you might be managing other sounds and you know a stream deck or, or things like that and sometimes chat can fall down the priority so in this video i'm going to be going through how you can make the best of the chat that you've got how you can manage it as it grows and i'm going to be splitting this into four key categories uh, one will be managing the viewer chat in itself two will be ergonomic environmental and usability related changes that you can make to your stream three will be managing the bot chat and how you adapt that over time and finally four at the very end of the video i'll be doing some super tips for you as well so i'm sorry you've got to watch this until the very end actually would advise watching this to the very end because there's some good information throughout it or you could just skip to the end i don't really <laughs> as always if you do find this useful i'd really appreciate a thumbs up on the video it definitely helps me and the visibility of this video finally the link to my discord is in chat and you're welcome to check me out daily at twitch.tv forward slash machine dana if you've got any questions that you want to ask me i do loads of different streaming videos tips hints guides tutorials that kind of thing i suppose we should get into it <laughs> as you first start to stream you'll probably not be getting too many chats and honestly anyone being in your chat chatting to you is going to be like a godsend it helps with the content the flow and it just makes streaming so much better when you've got engagement with chat but if you're doing everything right and honestly it's a very competitive market there's a lot that you have to do right to, to grow but of course you as the broadcaster are the main event as it grows your chat's going to get more and more difficult to manage and of course you don't want to run the risk of missing key chat messages so the first point we're going to get into is managing the viewer chat in itself and there's a long list of things to get through here so i'm going to try and power through these as quickly as possible power through machine dana <laughs> okay let's first talk about chat alerts Within Streamlabs OBS and certainly within Stream Elements, you've got different modules that you can use to help aid in the communication and the flow of information to your viewers. Within Streamlabs OBS, you can log in at streamlabs.com. You're able to have under Cloudbot here, a number of different things that can help you out. Under the module section, there's this thing called chat alerts. Chat alerts are brilliant because they put into the chat key information about what's going on on your stream. If someone gives bits, donates, subscribes, uh, and all kinds of things like that. So you're not having necessarily to rely on you acknowledging it, which then frees up some more of your time. And remember, this whole video is about freeing up your time to be the broadcaster and the entertainer rather than just constantly tending to chat. Of course, there's a balance because you do also need to tend to chat as part of that entertainment. They're really easy to turn on. I just need to do a transition change here, just one sec. <laughs> you, you simply toggle this here and you can configure it within the preferences section. I'll drop a link in the description below. I've done a more detailed video about chat alerts. As your stream grows, you're going to be faced with a decision as to whether or not you want to turn on follower only chat or leave it off and subscriber only chat and leave that off. And remember, once you turn it on, you can always remove it again. So you can trial and error these things. If you're going through a particularly high volume state of chat or there's some crazy stuff going on, perhaps some spamming and things like that, you can turn on emote only chat. Within your stream chat, you simply forward slash follower uh, and you can then choose to turn it on for a period of time. 600 seconds would be 10 minutes. Turn it off with this toggle here. So it's really easy to do. Your mods can do this very quickly on mod view as well. If you go onto your stream manager, you can also put emote only chat or follower only chat as the quick actions. You just need to bear in mind with follower only chat and subscriber only chat that it can hinder the growth of your channel. Some people that perhaps want to just try before they buy, uh, I know they're not 
necessarily buying anything if they're following but this is again personal preference and trial and error you just have to monitor it and see how you feel over a course of a longer period of time i'd recommend also keeping an eye on the highlighted messages from your chat the chances are if someone is highlighting a message it's either very important or they've asked the question a number of times and they're highlighting it as a almost like a last resort really so if you see a highlighted message generally you want to be focusing in on that and reading it even if you don't read it out on stream and respond to it in your mind you want to be at least paying attention to that highlight messages using the channel points rewards here assuming you've got affiliate or partner at this stage if you've not don't worry as soon as you hit that the channel points will open up why aren't you answering me machine dana there you go it's highlighted my message and that's typically what happens in my chat <laughs> if you at the start of the stream before you go live add a command that is today exclamation point today or exclamation point schedule with what's happening on the stream today that can make a really big difference the bot is answering the question for them rather than you having to repeat that information for all of your viewers so i try to update my i've got an exclamation point today command i try to update that every single stream that i do with the games that i'm going to be playing or the activities that i'm going to be doing and if necessary also the timings of those activities as well so next we're going to get onto some ergonomic some environmental and usability changes that you can make to your streaming environment and also just the layout of your of your stream a really really simple thing that you can do with streamlabs obs and you can do this with other streaming software as well like xsplit or with obs studio you're able to often move the chat panel within the software itself to certain sides and of course if you use stream manager as your primary viewing box then you can also do it on stream manager you can go into the settings cog on the left hand side here by default the chat panel will be on the right hand side of streamlabs if you don't see the chat panel you can simply pop it out with this little icon here so if you click this cog here you can edit some appearance settings and other things that will help improve the way that you manage your chat for example in the appearance settings here we can change the chat text size for me i've got pretty good vision but because there's quite a lot of real estate on one of my monitors to my right hand side, I'm able to have quite a lot of space there that allows me to increase the size of the text and drag out the panel for the text even further. So for me to have text a little bit larger in size makes really good sense. You can also show the live doc chat on the left hand side and that's what I've done here. So because I've got this checked here the chat will show on the left hand side instead of the right hand side and I'm also on my layouts able to drag that out a little bit further which then tapers the text further along there and means that you're not at risk of squashing the text and then densifying the text and maybe you might only see one or two texts if it's really squashed and that makes a really big difference in how quickly you can read the chat but also how many messages you can see at any one time as well and it's really important as the broadcaster that you try and understand what's going on in chat particularly when you're a small to medium-sized streamer obviously here not everybody can afford to have a second or even third or fourth monitor but you may want to seriously consider getting a cheap second monitor that only handles chat or if you've already got two monitors maybe even a third monitor that handles chat specifically me personally i have an ultra wide monitor on the right hand side of what i'm doing so i actually split the ultra wide monitor have one window panel on one side and different window panels on the other side and now just running through how you would edit the chat panel within the stream manager section here again you would click the pencil to edit this and you can simply drag the different panels into different areas around the screen if your main screen is in front of you you want to be having your chat panel on the left hand side if you've got stream manager on the right hand side some people just prefer stream manager rather than the streaming software itself and again here you can resize these panels so what you're looking at here is my current layout. Uh, as you can see, it's not particularly complicated. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. I've got a stream deck here. My keyboard's just underneath that and my mouse is here. This is my main 4K monitor that I use, 144 frames per second. It's the big dog monitor that you use for the actual gaming. And this is the ultra wide monitor and it goes quite far over here. I normally split this into two so that I've got Streamlabs on the left hand side, Spotify top right and then Discord underneath that. Now you can see here I've got the chat on the left hand side so and that's positioned right next to my camera. And one thing I am seriously considering doing and not everyone can afford to do this and it's completely understandable if you can't but you don't have to to spend a lot of money on this you don't have to go for a top of the range monitor to do this getting a second or third just realized 
You can see me on the picture taking the phone picture. <laughs> Getting a really, really cheap, low-grade monitor, purely and only for your chat, is something that you're able to do. And within Stream Manager, you can actually pop out the chat by clicking on here. And that then will allow you to drag it to a third monitor that you can position somewhere around your room. But the main reason I wanted to talk about this is positioning of your environment can make a really big difference to how you manage chat. You really want to be engaging with the camera when you're responding to any chat messages. However, you have to look away from the camera to be able to read the messages. So there's a real trade-off there. First of all, the speed at which you do that is quite important. If you're having to move quite a big direction to read text, to only to then come back and look at the camera. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take momentary time away from you and your time with the broadcast or with the viewers. So what you wanna be doing is minimizing that distance that you're having to move to look at chat and then look back to the camera to engage in the response. So for me, my eyes go from looking at the camera here down to the chat here. And actually, I'm generally reading the bottom of the chat for the most recent stuff and to see if any of the stuff above the chat there is relevant. Now, you might think that this is all stupid, um, but every little thing can make a difference when you're streaming. Every single little change that you make will make a difference to the quality of what you do and how you engage with your viewers. So these are physical things that you can do both in terms of your layout of your software, but also monitors and things like that can make a really big difference to how much time you're, you're sort of wasting moving around. The final thing, just in terms of ergonomic, environmental or usability related things you can do to improve your chat, is I would say you've got to be mindful that some of your viewers will be on mobile device. So sometimes your delay might be 30 seconds to a minute. There's a little bit of a latency between what you say and when they hear it, and of course their time to respond it back to you. The delay is between you saying something to answer a question and it hitting the viewer and on mobile this is notoriously worse and this applies to tablet as well so you've got to be quite mindful of that another reason why that's quite important is if you're using a tablet device a mobile device or even a phone to monitor and manage the chat you yourself will be managing your chat from your own broadcast which means you're experiencing that chat latency it's just something that's worth bearing in mind if you're considering getting a monitor or perhaps a tablet or something like that just for chat actually you may not want to do that you may want to go with a monitor instead so now we get on to section three managing bot chat i'll link another video in the description below which talks a little bit about how you can re color your bot chat and this goes through the process it's about a 10 minute video of how you can literally color the chat of every single bot command that comes from your cloud bot if you are using Streamlabs. But the reason why this is important is if you color the text chat to be the color of the name it distinguishes that chat from everyone else's chat and therefore you know to pay more or less attention to certain parts of chat. Paramount is the viewers chat that's always going to be most important but the bot commands can sometimes dilute your video visibility, particularly if you've not done some of the other things that I've talked about in this video. And very, very briefly, what you need to do here is you just need to type forward slash me and then a space and then whatever the command is after that. But you should do that on your defaults, your variables, on your settings, and also on any timers as well. And that just means that this will color itself the same color. The text will be called the same color as the bot's name and therefore won't be white and is a little bit more distinguishable both for you as the broadcaster but also for the viewers as well. You can also edit your bot's commands in the advanced section here and you're easily able to add global cooldowns or user cooldowns. Now if you've got particularly high volume commands that you want people to use but not in any level of anger, anger? Volume? I don't know. I think you get what I mean. You can add a global cooldown value in seconds or a value in seconds for the user cooldown. So I have regularly over the course of many weeks revisited the commands and cooldowns that I've had both on my commands that are manual and of course on timers as well. The line minimum is how many lines of chat there needs to be within the given interval or timers for which will allow the triggering of those timers. You may want to just adjust the intervals and expand those out a little bit as your chat becomes more and more busy. I can't count the amount of times I've joined a Twitch channel or a YouTube channel and the chat has been going on and there's been so much bot spam. It really does degrade the stream quite a lot if there's too many bot commands. Another thing you can do here with the commands, when you edit them, 
You can choose the permissions. So for more higher value commands, you may want to consider limiting that to just subscribers or to just mods. But you can also choose for uh, this to be answered in, in a whisper rather than it be answered in chat. And again, for certain commands, that might be something that you want to consider. That'll just allow the removal of some of the chat density. Another thing here, if you're using CloudBot with Streamlabs OBS, and I've done tutorials on all of these modules on how best to use them. So please feel free to browse the playlist for those. But some of these may not be getting used very much on your channel. And that is usually a sign that you either need to improve the module, or it could also be a sign that you just need to turn the module off. Those modules are not really being used much for you. So don't be afraid of turning off certain modules particularly if they're simply not being used that much or even if they're being overused you can consider adding cooldowns to them for example and i've regularly had to do this the gamble mini game is a particularly high volume module for me so within the command sections on the default commands i was able to go to the gamble command and edit this so that the permit you could edit it so that the permission is just for subscribers but in particular in the advanced section i put a user cooldown of 65 seconds on this and as my channel grows i expect that that will draw out even further 90 seconds 120 seconds it allows the function to be had for some users but it means that you can moderate the amount that those particularly high volume bot commands are being used one final little tip with regards to bots um i would definitely guard against overusing timers i mean i've got quite quite a lot here but mine are in the absolute minimum interval is 30 minutes you don't need to have for example a timer that tells the viewers your youtube channel uh, and your discord channel and your twitch channel and your twitter channel and your tiktok channel and your only fans can amalgamate some of the timers into one and bear in mind also that there is a command that you could use a manual command instead of timers for those and bear in mind also that other chat users will help out if you've got a particularly busy chat by doing those manual commands instead of timers for example you could have a schedule that tells people what games are being played that day but also at what times they're being played when the stream is going Going to end and when the stream is expected to take breaks lots of information in one timer and you could also have just one social media which is your only fans and your whatever it is that you've got right i don't know there's too many of them these days it's getting ridiculous i'm sick of it like where does it end where does it end I don't have enough hours in the day to manage social media. I'm crap at it. I hate it. And that's why I don't have an OnlyFans. But maybe I should set up an OnlyFans. I don't know. Would I make extra money on that? But equally with those, trying to be succinct as possible with the information too. Because remember, the more information you put in there, the more real estate it's taking on your chat panel. If you've got a chat panel that's taking up multiple timers and bot commands and every single one of them is very verbose then all of a sudden you're going to be in a situation where most of the chat panel is bots and not very much of it is your chat if you can say something in a more succinct way it'll only take up one line then that's normally best and that's why for, for that reason all of these are sometimes only seven eight ten words in length I've tried to really think about limiting the number of words that I put on my timers. Ultimately, it's up to you how you choose to manage your bots and commands. The point I'm making here is that these are definitely things that you can do to improve the way that you manage your chat, proactive things, rather than just suffering and failing to manage your chat and ultimately potentially turning off viewers because you're ignoring some of their questions. So hopefully you found those three things useful. I did say I'd give you some super tips at the end. And those are, first of all, make sure you leverage your mods. Don't be afraid of kind of asking for a, a brief meeting with your key mods and, and just asking them how you want to manage chat better. For example, you may decide that you want to have your mods greet the people that join your chat instead of you greeting them in case you ever miss them. Obviously, you don't want anyone joining a channel and feeling like they're not welcome just purely because you've missed a message in chat due to the volume. The mods can help pick up some of the slack there. They really can. And it makes a huge difference to the positivity in your channel. And it also sets a really good standard for the vibe that you give off on your channel. Don't be afraid of using video explainers within either timers or commands for key parts of your stream. And what I mean by that, for example, if you do something special on your stream, you may want to record a short clip explaining what that is, adding it as a command on your channel, a custom command, so that when people ask that question, rather than taking time out of the stream to explain it again manually every single time it's asking, of course, this applies mainly to high volume questions. What games do you play? 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 Do you play? Just 
allow your mods to answer some of the questions or have a timer that says exclamation point games and there's a clip on there that says the games i like to play are xyz the users and the viewers have got a choice to click on those videos and get that information instantly and it also looks really really professional if you've taken the time out to record those snippets of information but equally it also saves you time so that you can manage unique questions and of course you'll broadcast the content and the games and music and everything else that you've got to manage right a couple more super tips here don't feel like you need to answer absolutely every question that comes from your chat you don't have to read every single question and answer every single question quite often what makes a good community is their ability to talk to each other and interact with each other and that actually makes your community stronger more loyal and more committed and often means that they enjoy more time together whereas if the conversation is always your viewers to you and back again that's potentially going to be difficult to maintain over a long period of time particularly if you stream a lot or if there's very high volume chat. But certainly having some interaction between mods and other viewers is of benefit if they're asking questions and answering some of the questions that you would normally answer. So over time, you may want to consciously not answer certain questions and choose to ignore certain messages, particularly the repetitive ones or ones that you know that your mods would answer. Remember as the broadcaster, you don't want to overpower the broadcast just by answering all questions within your chat. Some of it has to be the event that you're doing or the special occasion or the game that you're playing or the content or the movie that you're breaking down or whatever it is that you do, knitting pictures of baby sharks whilst standing on your head, whatever it is. <laughs> the final tip I'll give is that try to frame your stream at the start of every stream and at the end of every stream. And that often will answer many questions about what's going on in the stream or what's going on later in the week before people ask the questions. And that does two things. First of all, it's good and it's professional and it looks like you plan well, even though we all know that you don't. But what it also does is it prevents people from asking those questions down the line. And it also means that those people are likely to then answer the questions for you throughout the duration of the stream. I mean, what more do you want? And that could be something as simple as spending two minutes at the start of every stream saying, hey guys, this is exactly what we're doing today. X, Y, Z, these times, these are the games we're playing and we're gonna have so much fun. And then at the end of the stream, right guys, I'll be back on Tuesday at this time doing this thing, this thing, this thing. You've answered the questions and that just reduces some of the density, but also builds up trust with your viewers. Hopefully you found this useful. Best of luck, hopefully you grow and grow and grow and this becomes more and more of a problem for you because if it is, and if it already is, it means you're doing a really, really good job. And therefore, I approve. Don't forget to like the video, feel free to subscribe and have a wonderful day.